Nvidia replaces Intel. Facebook and Nvidia do not want to get sued for doing wrong things with money and AMD making a lot of money outselling Intel finally. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Wednesday, November 6, 2024. We're going to start off today talking about a huge change that's actually going to be happening this coming Friday. I'm not talking about the US election, but rather the replacement of Intel on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. This is one of the conglomerate stock packages that you have here in the United States, and Intel has been on the Dow Jones for roughly 25 years, basically the entire lifespan of NVIDIA, and it's now being replaced by them this coming Friday, November 8th. This just represents all of the changing market forces of Intel taking a nosedive, cratering in terms of market value, and obviously NVIDIA's recent run up to be a mega company larger than most others that are on the planet right now. So this is a big shakeup. It's mostly symbolic. It doesn't really change a whole lot. It just shows the overall sentiment between these two companies. Intel's no longer viewed as the like blue chip uh, legacy stock that you can kind of trust. It's rather being viewed as something that probably shouldn't be held up as a bastion of stocks you should care about. But I also would say that this next rumor is not a bastion of, uh, you know, something you should trust, but I'm going to talk about it anyways. There's a rumor going around that we should be able to see the RTX 50 series soon. Whatever that means, we will meet GeForce of Blackwell soon. This is coming from a well-known leaker who's disclosed a lot of previous stuff with regards to GPUs from NVIDIA and it, soon, whatever that means, it could mean CES, it could potentially mean an unveiling before the end of this month or the end of the year and potentially a launch in January. It's not quite clear, but in case that wets your whistle in terms of things you're looking for. But Facebook and Nvidia are looking for people to stop suing them, please. So they're going to the Supreme Court of the United States to see if they could get investor lawsuits, class action lawsuits to kind of stop because they're a nuisance. Specifically, the two that are quoted uh, are in NVIDIA's lawsuit where they were sued for lying to their investors about crypto mining and crypto sales, of which they ended up paying out that case, $5.5 million to settle their bad reporting on crypto mining. And then on Facebook's side, it has to do with the Cambridge Analytica scandal that happened back in 2015, 2016. So NVIDIA is arguing that these are frivolous and nuisance and that they're fishing expeditions to claim securities fraud by hindsight. These are gonna be heard both today as well as next week. Facebook is today. Day, NVIDIA is going to be November 13th next week, where the Supreme Court's going to hear their case. How this plays out, not obviously sure at this moment. I will say, coming from somebody who's been in the tech industry and kind of saw what NVIDIA did back in 2018 with misreporting crypto mining sales, I don't really think that was hindsight. I could see that they were, you know, uh, fudging the numbers and not disclosing how much money they were making from mining all the way back then, just as a casual observer. So I don't know how much that argument holds up in just regular discourse, but obviously I'm not a lawyer. We'll have to see how that plays out in the highest court in the land here in the United States. And let's uh, shift things over to the highest deal in the land in the other place. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. I'm thankfully much more awake today. The jet lag is starting to wear off, which is good news because I got some deals for you. Starting off today with this XBX Retro 75% wireless hot swappable mechanical keyboard going for only $61.35 making it $17.64 for a lovely retro looking keyboard with a nice little display and knob on it. And then speaking of nice displays, we have this Hisense U6 series 55 inch 4K mini LED smart TV going for only $347.99, making it $200 off. And then lastly, we have this gorgeous power color Red Devil Radeon RX 7900 XT going for only 662.99, making it $137 off. I know some of you wait to hang on until you can get a Red Devil card. It is now within spitting distance of the cheapest 7900 XTs. Just remember this is a big boy card. This thing is freaking massive. So keep that in mind. But hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, I hope you can save me 60 bucks because the official Steam controller is going on sale here in the United States on December 16th. This is a collaboration between Valve and Hori to come out with this new gamepad, which has been launched in Japan for the last few months, but now is gonna be making its way to the American shores. It doesn't have the touchpads that you came to expect from previous Steam controllers, but the Steam Focus gamepad is gonna be launching here. Gonna have Bluetooth connectivity, 12 hours battery. It's a controller. I actually don't know if I need 60 bucks to buy it because I, I actually don't think I'm gonna use it. I recently dropped 
uh, a little bit of money on uh, a Kill Sense controller. I recently found out about these. They have like a Cube Sense little GameCube retro design. I ended up picking up one of their retro PS1 colors, especially because of the PS5 30th anniversary limited edition one, because we're going to compare it to that and see what a third party company could do. I'm kind of chock full of controllers at the moment, but I'm not chock full of all the 3D V cache that I could possibly want. Obviously, 9800X3D review should be dropping today probably as hot news is coming out. It looks like they're gonna be good. Average FPS is up, 0.1% FPS is up. It looks like the 9800X3D is gonna make a lot of sense at $480, which is the official confirmed price by AMD on that chip. It'll be launching on Thursday, but turns out that's not the only CPU that they're gonna be putting X3D in. We talked about the higher core count ones, 9950X3D, but now there's reports that Threadripper is looking to potentially get an X3D bump later on this generation. Generation. There's not much to it besides motherboard support, Threadripper motherboard support, getting X3D support. It would be an interesting setup, especially with how many limited applications can take advantage of the 3D stack cache. It's kind of mostly in gaming, but this could potentially be something that prosumers really love. They have that Threadripper setup of extra PCI Express lanes, extra cores, that heavy duty workstation performance, but then you have eight cores that have 3D V cache so that you just kind of process lasso the rest of them and then make it so that those eight cores can run your games a little bit better. That could be cool. But the thing that I'm more excited about is that the APUs are allegedly getting 3D V cache in the mobile form factor, specifically the Strix Halo series. This is something we've been talking about for quite some time. These are supposed to be the Mac Daddy 40 compute unit RDNA 3.5 APUs that are going to rival the RTX 4070 laptop edition. And now it reports are coming out that the CPU could potentially have 3D vCache on it, making it that much better in terms of mobile gaming performance. Anything to make the Strix Halo CPUs better, I'm all for. I want to see a revolution in these just massive honking APUs that deliver CPU performance, GPU performance out to wazoo. We kind of see Apple doing that with their M4 Max and Ultra chips. Kind of want the x86 Intel and AMD side of it to start coming out and that with the Strix Halo should start to happen. Additionally, with that, just want to talk about a quick little bump that they're giving to their other laptop specs. The AI300 Strix point specs got a sneaky little update where it used to say that they only supported up to LPDDR5X 7500 mega transfer now it's up to 8,000 mega transfers. Just a little increase that they gave. But AMD's been increasing for quite some time. Their sales numbers have been incredible ever since Ryzen started to hit the mainstream. And now, for the first time ever being reported, AMD has outsold an Intel, not in the consumer space. We kind of already knew that was happening, but rather in the data center space. This is the place where Intel thought they had a firm lead with all of their Xeons. AMD used to have a terrible market share. It's been rapidly growing, and now the revenue is matching that. AMD's revenue in the data center section was $3.549 billion in the third quarter, whereas Intel's was only $3. 0.3 billion. So AMD just continuing to outpace Intel on a lot of different things, both in the client sector with the things that we're buying, 9800X3D and 7800X3D gonna be the mainstay gaming CPUs for years to come at this point. And then you also have them doing very well in the data center side. Everything's coming up Millhouse for AMD. Looks, looks to be good. Congrats for them setting that record. And I, you guys recorded your responses in the comments yesterday, so let's take a look at that. Over on Floatplane, we got Scarfo saying, oh, so now that the 9000 series X3D is out, can we hope for 16 core with X3D on all cores now that they fixed the core overheating issue that allows for overclocking? I don't think so, based on all of the uh, rumors and details that I've been seeing behind the scenes. I still think the X3D is gonna be limited to one CCD and that they've been working to fix that with things like the X3D Turbo Boost or Asus's Turbo Game Mode. You're supposed to enable that on the 9950X3D. It's not really designed for the 9950X or the 9800X3D. It's really designed for that 9950X3D. So they're trying to solve a BIOS way to fix the 9950X3D in terms of that. As far as I'm aware, they're not gonna be putting X3D on all 16 cores. I really hope I'm wrong. I would love it if it actually was there, uh, but it's not 
looking like it at the moment, uh, but I, I will gladly be wrong on that. Then over on YouTube, we got X Master saying, Apple makes outstanding hardware for an OS incompatible with everything at an unobtainable price. It kind of muddles the appeal. Number one, um, at an unobtainable price, I really don't agree with that. Certain things, certain upgrades you bring to it, uh, can elevate the price quite considerably, but the Mac Mini starts at $599, and the hardware level that you're getting at those base prices is quite incredible. As soon as you start trying to increase the RAM, or you try to start increasing the storage, that's where things can get a little difficult, but especially with storage, external storage exists. External SSDs are way cheaper. That's actually the route that I'm going with my M4 Max MacBook Pro, is I got two terabytes of internal storage. I paid for the upgrade on that, but then I also bought a four terabyte external SSD so that I didn't have to spend the $2,700 that they want in order to get that level of storage on that. But also OS incompatible with everything, uh, just games really, like the Mac OS is compatible with a butt ton of stuff. It's actually a very robust operating system. And uh, in many cases, especially in productivity, it has better support, especially in the music development scene, as well as in editing. Like. Mac OS is actually really compatible. That just sounds like raw hatred and not necessarily like I, based on all of the things that I've seen and used and uh, see out in the professional real world, Mac is well loved and well used for its compatibility. Then Vinegar saying five seconds is truly the most magnificent moment in all of YouTube history. I had a little spittle. I didn't see it as I did it, but if you go back to yesterday's episode, I did, I did, sorry. It happened. And Wax Cutter saying, they need to just get rid of recall. It is anti-security and anti-safety. Well, they say that they're trying to prioritize that and they've been delaying it. So by delaying it, they're actually fulfilling their promise. Big brain move. Then Yurash saying, I'm not belittling or invalidating your troubles, Reese, but that's an adorable little heat wave you guys are having. To which Reese responded, but I'm also gonna respond to that saying, look, today was definitely better than the 95 of the previous two days, but going from freezing temperatures in the Northern hemisphere to this has been a rough switch. So that is correct. But then also one of the things that South Africa doesn't have is well ventilated homes and air conditioning. So when they actually have a heat wave of 95 to 98, it's actually really hot in their houses. It's not like Americans where we escape and we have our air conditioning in a lot of different uh, sectors of the US, typically not in the Pacific Northwest. That heat bubble that happened a few years ago happened. It was actually really dangerous. It's a problem to have those types of temperatures in areas where they don't have climate control. And so listen, I'm not gonna necessarily be little Reese for complaining about 95 to 98 degree temperatures at, at, at a home I visited his apartment. It doesn't have airflow. The walls keep the heat in. It's not good. And then we have Reese Hill saying, where is the other guy? Not here. Makes my heart sad. Wish he was. I will end on uh, the note that I really appreciated having Reese and Catlin over for the amount of time that we did. It was a lot of fun having them. It was great to have them on stream as well as here for the charity event that we we pulled off and so thank you to everybody who has been watching the channel has been supporting us for a very long time uh, back in 2019 when we left South Africa I wasn't certain of what the future was going to look like and then in 2020 with us losing their work visa applications more uncertainty and now we're here in 20 24 almost 2025 and they're still part of the team we still can hang out with them and it's been it's been fun it's been lovely and I will see you guys hopefully tomorrow with more of the hottest tech news.